BTEC, Applied Science, Unit 1, Chemistry, Metallic Bonding. We've talked about ionic bonding, covalent bonding. This video is about metallic bonding and the properties of metals. So in a metal, you've got a giant lattice of positive ions and in between them, there are delocalized electrons or free electrons. So electrons swimming around, doing what they want, jiggling around, and then layers and layers and layers of positive ions. Okay, and that is the structure of a metal. Uh, be able to sketch and label that diagram. Uh, what holds it together is that these positive ions and the free electrons attract each other. So it's like the free electrons are kind of the glue holding these positive ions together. And that's metallic bonding. That's what holds the ions the, or the particles in a metal together. Now, physical properties of metals. The physical properties of metals, the, the very, very useful materials. And why are they useful? Because now, these are the four properties we need to know. The good conductors of heat, good conductors of electricity. They are malleable, which means you can hammer them into shape. And they are ductile, which means you can draw them into wire. Now, why are they good conductors of heat? Well, there's two reasons why, which you need to know. Firstly, uh, all the atoms are in rows, they're all regularly arranged and they're close together and if, if they start vibrating at one end then what will happen is that this energy will be passed on to their neighbours and so the energy will be transferred, it will pass through the metal from atom to atom to atom. The other reason is the free electrons. The free electrons can whiz around, go wherever they want, and they can carry energy through the metal. So there are two reasons why they are good conductors of heat. Why are they good conductors of electricity? Well, that's easier to explain. Electrons are negatively charged. They carry a negative charge. And when the electrons move through the metal, well, the flow of charge is a current, an electrical current. So electrons are negatively charged. Free electrons can move through the metal. Current is the flow of charge. So they're good conductors of electricity. Things like plastic, they're good insulators because they don't have free electrons. They are malleable. You can hammer them into shape because, as I said earlier, the, the atoms, the particles are in layers and these layers can slide over each other. So if you bang it with a hammer, what happens is the layers of atoms slide over each other and the metal can change shape. And that's why metals are malleable. Think of the word mallet, which is a, a hammer. And ductile for the same reason. If you stretch it, what will happen is there'll be layers of atoms sliding over each other and it will get thinner in the middle. So it will become uh, like stretch it into a wire, if you like. This is why metals are ductile for the same reason, because the layers of atoms can slide over each other. It's called plastic deformation. A few other things we need to know. Uh, here is group one, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and look at the melting point. Notice that the melting point, the temperature at which it melts in degrees centigrade, notice that it's getting smaller. Now, why does it get smaller as we go down the group? Well, it's because the atoms are bigger, because you get more and more shells as you go down the group, so the distance between the nucleus and the delocalized electrons is bigger. And so the force holding the structure together is weaker. Remember that the electrons were the superglue. Well, if they're further away from the nuclei, then the force holding it together will be weaker. So as you go down a group, the melting point gets smaller. 
Now look at this, this is group one and group two. And if you just look at the melting points of group one compared to group two, then clearly group two has a higher melting point compared to group one. Now, why do group two metals have a higher melting point? Compared with elements in the same period, well, now we have two delocalized electrons. For every atom, there are two free electrons. So if there's more delocalized electrons, then there's more superglue holding it together. Also, the metal ions, they've got more positive charge. A magnesium nucleus has got one more proton than a sodium, so it's got a bigger positive charge so the metallic bonding will be stronger. There are more free electrons and the nuclei have, has more charge. So the metallic bonding will be stronger, so the melting point will be higher. So here's some uh, questions for you to have a go at. Describe the structure of metals. Be able to sketch and label that diagram at the beginning. Describe what holds them together. Explain why metals are A, B, C, D, the four things we talked about. Why does lithium have a higher melting point than sodium? They're obviously both in group one. And then why does beryllium have a higher melting point than lithium? So that's group two. Sorry, that's further along in the period. Yeah, that's group two compared to group one.